Hello YouTube and welcome to a very quick Wednesday tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about sharpening. Now the desire to take sharp photos is always, I guess, you know, what a photographer will want to strive for. But the thing about a lot of cameras today is things tend to come out a little bit soft and we actually want to bring this into an image editing program and to actually get it sharpened. So in today's video, we are actually going to take a closer look at sharpening, you know, how it works and what you can do to make it better. It is the 26th of June 2013, a Wednesday. You're watching 0612 TV. This is 0612 TV. Well, welcome aboard. So sharpening. Let's actually take a look at, you know, what sharpening actually is, how it works, and then we'll actually jump into, you know, actually putting it onto an image. So here's the deal. When an image appears kind of blurry, what actually is happening is the edges aren't very well defined. If we can actually have edges that are thin and well defined, the image won't look blurry. And that is exactly what the sharpening filter wants to achieve. It wants to actually emphasize the edges so that you can see them clearly and it actually creates an illusion of the image being sharper than it actually is. Now this is an important thing to note because if you actually have, for example, focus blur, what this actually means is that an edge, instead of being a clearly defined line, is going to actually be kind of smudged out. But if the problem is kind of severe, the sharpening filter won't think of your blurred edge as an edge at all. And of course, since the edge is actually smudged out, the sharpening filter won't actually be able to, you know, collect it back. This of course means that, well, if things are too blurred, there is nothing you can do about it. Sharpening filters only go so far. So then the question is, you know, how does a sharpening filter actually enhance that edge? How does it make it more visible? You see, all it actually has to do is to increase the contrast between the actual line that makes up the edge and its surroundings. Now, there are a number of different sharpening filters out there, including some popular ones like Unsharp Mask, and they all take a slightly different approach to actually doing this. But the core idea is the same. You need to first find where all the edges are, and then second, emphasize the edges by increasing the contrast between the edge and the surroundings. So now that we understand how you know the whole concept of sharpening works, let us now jump into actually attempting to do it, and we will see what we can do to make it better. Now, if you've actually come to accept that sharpening is something you wanna do in your workflow, you can actually prepare for this when you actually take the photos. If you are able to actually, you know, choose your foreground and background such that there is some contrast between them, well, sharpening works easier because the edges are generally well-defined enough. You can do a subtle sharpening and that should do the job because of course, in the event of, you know, not a lot of contrast between the foreground and the background, the sharpening algorithm might actually have some problems finding the edges. If you actually create a strong contrast between the foreground and the background, this is less likely to happen. So now that you have your pictures, let's bring them into an image editing application. Personally, I'm using GIMP. If you're using Photoshop or you know any other similar image editing application, conceptually, what you have to do is similar. Now here's the deal. If you have a modern camera, it's probably you know 12 megapixels or something huge like that. And of course, when you actually bring that into your image editing program, you have a lot of pixels to play around with. This is important for sharpening, particularly because, well, if you actually use certain sharpening algorithms, it does actually create some undesirable artifacts that you probably don't want in your final shot. And not to mention, for a lot of lower-end cameras, chances are, when you actually view an image at 100%, things are either noisy or not very clear. To solve both these problems, what you can do is you can actually scale down your image. Now, if you're actually going to do large prints or stuff like that, this won't be an option. But if your images are going up on a web or you, if you want to make small prints or if you want to put the pictures on your phone, chances are you can actually reduce the size a little bit. Things will look a lot nicer and yet you will still have quite a bit of resolution to play around with. So here's what I do. At this stage, I will run my sharpening filter of choice. Most programs will at least have two options for you to choose from. One of them being Unsharp Mask, which does its job by blurring the entire image and then comparing that against the original to find the edges. Or you can of course use the default sharpen option, 
Now, I don't know how that is implemented, but that will also give you certain amount of sharpening. Now, the thing about unsharp mask is you have quite a lot of control. You can actually choose the radius, which of course will determine how much blurring is actually done in the first pass. If you bring this value up too high, the effect might be extremely pronounced, so you might want to watch out for that. The radius will define how much fall off there is, and what this actually means is if you increase the radius, modifications will not only be made along the edge, but also somewhat outside the edge as well. If you turn down the radius, its area of effect will be smaller. I like to keep this value kinda low, because once you turn it up, you actually get weird contrast patterns all over the place. But well, just go ahead and experiment, because of course you want things to look, you know, better, sharper, but not artifacty. The amount, of course, you know, it's just how much sharpening you want to put on. Now, threshold is a setting that actually allows you to only apply sharpening to areas that are blurred a certain amount as set by the threshold. Now, personally, I've almost always left this value at zero because I feel that, you know, applying the effect to the entire image creates more realistic kind of look and feel. Personally, I tend to use the sharpen option a lot instead of unsharp mask, but well, that's just a matter of preference. Either way, whichever filter you choose to use, whatever kind of parameters you choose to use, when you're done, click OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually scale down the image. Personally, I scale my images from 12 megapixels, that's 4000 by 3000, to about 2 megapixels, that's 1600 by 1200. And well, it actually makes things look nice. Even if you zoom into 100%, things still look very crisp. And yet, there is still a lot of resolution you can play around with. Now, in fact, this step is where all the magic happens. Because normally, when you actually do sharpening to an image, you can kind of see that sharpening has been done because it's kind of hard to avoid the actual artifacts. However, if you actually apply sharpening to a full scale image and then scale it down, these artifacts actually become less prominent. And basically, that's it. That's all there is for sharpening. Of course, go ahead and do the other enhancements you like to do to your images. Personally, sharpening and cropping are the only things I do before I scale down an image. Mostly because, well, the effects you get from brightness and contrast adjustments, color adjustments, you know, whether you do it on a large scale image or a small scale image, but when you're actually doing these operations on a shrunken image, well, your computer gets done with it faster. So I tend to do those after scaling it down. And that's it, that's all there is for this episode on sharpening. Hopefully, well, you have a better idea of, you know, how to use unsharp mask, you know, the entire scaling down trick, which is actually the most important part of this tutorial. So yeah, I hope you learned something. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash 0612TV. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV.